Hey everyone, welcome back to Part Out, where we talk about off-road rigs and accessories. Now today's a bit of a special day because we got a bit of a unique vehicle that's manufactured 100% in Russia. Let's go. This is a 2017 UAZ Hunter. Yep, you heard me. This is a 2017. Totally looks like it, doesn't it? Now this is what you would call staying completely true to your roots as far as design goes. Now the UAZ Hunter came out over 40 years ago and it's just, it's still what it is. When this first came out, it was actually supposed to be like their Willys Jeep for the military or the outgoing Humvees because it's still used today. This is a no-nonsense, off-road, purpose-built vehicle that is ready to hit the trails. And let's take a look at this thing and see what we really have. Okay, so we've got the hood popped here to look at the engine. Let's see what this thing has. I managed to find a spec sheet on this vehicle that I tried my best to translate from Russian to English. So here we go. So we have a gas engine here in this one that is featuring the ZMZ 40905 Euro 4 engine. Sounds pretty common to me. What that means as far as power output goes is we're looking at 128 horsepower with a whopping 130 foot pounds of torque. It's a five speed manual and that is the only way you can get this thing. There's no automatic option because there's no reason for automatics. And we were looking at a top speed of 75 miles an hour. I don't think I want to go 70 in this thing. We have a fuel tank of 19 gallons, a wheelbase of 94 inches. The fording depth, because for whatever reason I was able to translate that one, is 20 inches. So we can go ahead and hit some pretty uh, deep rivers as long as they're 20 inches. And we have front disc brakes and drums in the rear. So that's what we have as far as specs go on this vehicle. I'm pretty curious to see how it rides. So walking around the UAZ Hunter, I'm noticing that it's a fully stamped steel body because why wouldn't it be? It's, it's strong. And when we come around to the front, we're noticing that there aren't any frills as far as LED daytime running headlights. There's simply two headlights, two turn signals, air intake, steel bumper, and tow hooks. That's all you need. Same thing goes for around back. Check out the rear door on this thing. I mean, you open it up and it's this big heavy door so you feel like you're really grabbing onto something but check the opening out here you can literally fit groceries contraband off-road equipment in and out very easily now when i went to go fill this thing up at the gas station i uh couldn't remember which side the gas filler cap was on but i came to find out that it's uh it's on both sides that's right there are two gas tanks on this vehicle not really sure why, but you've got two, and if you really want to figure out why, you can go ask the Russians yourself. Now, I want to actually say a little disclaimer about this Hunter in particular, and that's because the owner of this one is doing his best to develop his own lift kit for it so he can fit these 33-inch tires in there with no problem. Now, with that being said, let me know in the comments what you think. Does this vehicle look cooler with the lift kit, or should you just keep it original and keep it stock the way it came from the factory? Now coming around to the interior of this vehicle, you can see that it's a pretty basic layout. And one of my favorite things about it is that everything in here is pretty much rubberized, which means washing out uh, mud, rocks, blood, off-road elements, that, everything that just really gets in there. It's, it's easy to wash and clean up, no stains. Now the seating position here in the Hunter reminds me a lot of the older generation Land Rovers where you have that captain style seating position where you can sit up over the vehicle and you have a great visibility. So that way you can see up over that long hood and then you can see up and down everywhere that you're looking. Now, rear visibility is a bit, uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's still ample. Is that, that's a word? <laughs> they offer a soft top version in case you wanna roll that way. Now, the dash here is actually laid out pretty nicely. You got four gauges here in the middle and then you got your speedo off to the left. Everything here that you need to know information about is there. I don't have some sort of fancy computer screen telling me what my angle of departure is or where the nearest coffee shop is. This is just pure bare bones, what you need to know and where you're going. And if you want some fresh breeze in here, no time wasting with uh, power windows or even roll down windows. We've got these fancy sliding windows. There's some air that can get in there, but if you really want to step up the airflow, you can turn on the air conditioner, which uh, you uh, open up this not awkwardly shaped door at all. Get yourself two hands on the roof and then you can get yourself out, give the door a good shut, and then you come over here, there we go. 
air conditioning. Okay, squeeze in here. All right. Let's fire this thing up. I, th I think we need the jumper cables. All right, let's see, buddy. Oh, that's a rough shift. Okay, all right, she's got some go. I mean, if slow is going, we're going. This is fun. Pretty much just sounds and feels like a bucket of bolts rolling around. Good sounds coming up from uh, below there. So I really don't know what the gear ratio is. I really couldn't decipher what I was seeing or trying to unveil when we were trying to find all the specs on this vehicle, but it, it's got some little lungy torqueness to it. So I can imagine that we got a pretty low gear ratio going on here. Going down the road, it's uh, kind of wandering a little bit, but that's kind of to be expected. Shifting through the gears is, um, woo, it's a, it's a chore. But it's fun, and this, this vehicle definitely keeps you on your toes. This is pretty cool. Cruising around here at about 45 whopping miles an hour. The mirrors are shaking. The, <laughs> the seats are shaking. Everything in here is shaking, including myself. Now let's go ahead and turn this thing around, get it back to the shop. We got a few off-road hills back there. Uh, nothing too crazy. We don't want to be stupid with this thing because obviously it doesn't belong to us and we want to make sure we return it with uh, all the parts working. Uh, power steering's a little. <laughs> okay, buddy. There we go. It doesn't like first gear that much. It does have a lot of pep though. Like it, it gets up and goes when you put the pedal down. I was not expecting that. The vehicle's shaking so much that the mirrors actually come loose. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Figuring this thing out is a mystery. I could say is you're not going that fast you don't need to be going that fast and just going down the road this is just a hoot like literally this is such a fun vehicle as you can see I just got my my stupid smirk on and I can barely hear my own thoughts over this transmission what a fun vehicle I can understand why they have that vents in the front because it's getting pretty hot in here Might as well. There we go. Get some some air in here. I feel like we're in neutral. Come on, baby. Turn, 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 turn. There she goes. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this thing can go up this hill that we've got back here. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Woo! <laughs> okay, it did that like it was nothing. But it made it feel really exciting because everything was flying around. You're not really sure what's attached to this vehicle and what's not. This thing feels a lot more at home out on the trail than it does on the road. That is one thing for sure I can say. Granted, we are moving a lot slower. Now we're gonna go downhill. Oh yeah. Piece of cake. All right, let's try this hill over here. And we're off. There 
There she goes. <laughs> I mean, these are super easy little hills, but this hunter just makes them fun. It's just something about it. You can feel every little bit of dirt that you run over and just, this is just a fun vehicle. That's all I can say. All right, so now we're coming up to a ridge. We're gonna see if we can come down it nice and easy. I'm gonna dip down, there she goes. Oh yeah, this is this is a great little great little SUV thing, Mabobber. I don't even know what you want to call this thing, but it's definitely fun. With the Hunter remaining virtually completely unchanged since its debut over 40 years ago, you can pretty much expect that the overhead cost to manufacture something like this today is pretty minimal, and you'd be right about that. What I'm told here, with this one being a 2017, you can actually pick one of these guys up brand new off the showroom floor, and I'm told ballpark it's about $10,000 and it's yours. So that's a pretty cool, cool plus here as far as what you get for a vehicle because I love this thing for its bare bones, raw driving experience. However, there is a quick little setback for all those of us here in the United States and that's because it's not legal here. So what I'm really hoping that UAS does is that they don't change this thing too much but just enough so that it can be street legal here so that way we can have a affordable brand new off-roading option for the market. And I know a lot of people would be interested in something like this, but you guys should let us know. So let us know in the comments what you think about the UAS Hunter as far as is it too bare bones or is it just enough so we can all have a little bit of fun on the trails without breaking the bank. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also like us on Facebook because we have a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we post there and it's just kind of a fun way to interact with our fans. So for right now, I'm actually gonna go hop in this thing. We're gonna hit a few more trails because it's just downright fun to drive this thing at 10 miles an hour. <laughs> So it's all